Hi, I'm Steve at Educative, and I'm joined by my friend Joe, who's going to take us through a Python program on how we actually make API calls to get data from third-party services uh, to compose and create new applications. Hey, Joe. Hey, Steve. So before we start stepping through this program, uh, can you tell the audience what an API is and, and why they're important? Sure. Uh, API stands for Application Programming Interface, and it's generally a way for uh, developers to interact with other services or other software libraries, um, both as a developer, but also to let code talk to other code. So it's essentially a way for, for, uh, for programs to talk to programs. Right. And in this example, we're using specifically uh, web APIs, and in this case, a REST API. And... Um, and this lets us uh, talk between computer languages. So like a backend can expose a web API and that backend can be written in Java, .NET, Ruby, or, or Python. And in our case, this application consuming it is Python, but it could also, this could also have been any other programming language too, correct? That's right, exactly. Um, and that, that HTTP that we're all familiar with hearing about is, is the, the common format for exchanging that information. Okay. Cool. So let's start stepping through this. But before we do, I've noticed that you've imported a bunch of different Python libraries to pull this off. So what are these different libraries doing for us? Sure. So these libraries are bringing in functionality that go a little bit beyond the, the base functionality that comes with the language. So um, for example, sys gives us some uh, really basic things for file input and output. Uh, JSON allows us to manipulate um, uh, uh, JavaScript object notation. Uh, formatted uh, files and and an output um, request is actually the library that we'll be using for making our remote request to our third-party API. Uh, text wrap just gives us some ability to um, deal with formatting our output. Uh, date time allows us to deal with date times and <laughs> date, dates and times. And then uh, config parser lets us pull in some inform information from a config file. And uh, path this import uh, path lib thing that you see there is, is also just a, a file input output utility. So we're just pulling in some utilities that help us kind of. Uh, put together this program. Uh, we're taking little bits of functionality from each one of them. Um, is that we're using the free openweathermap.org weather API. So you can sign up uh, for a free API key if you go to their website. And uh, the first thing that we need to do is actually get like the latitude and the longitude uh, for the location that we want to collect the weather. And it looks like the first thing that we're doing here is actually doing a lookup based on city, and then Open Weather Map is going to return the latitude and longitude utilizing um, this web API. So uh, step us through this, Joe. Yeah, that's correct. So uh, the first thing we're doing just to kind of make this, uh, this demo really easy to use is you can punch in any city. Um, for example, if I mouse over this location variable in the URL itself, you can see that it's, it's pulling from that, um, from that string that we've, we've assigned for Seattle. So, um, what's happening here is we're, we're assigning it to a variable, and then we're building up this URL. And this URL is uh, defined uh, from the openweathermap.org API. You can go look at their API docs uh, out on their website. In this case, uh, we are just doing a geolocation lookup, which means we're taking a place name and trying to get some GPS coordinates back for it. The second thing uh, that we see specified here is the app ID. That's the... Um, the key that they use to, to identify the uh, API key. So you can go out to openweathermap.org, get your own API key for free, and then you'd, you'd dump it in here. Got it. Okay. And for people who are new to web APIs, uh, as we're constructing this URL, it looks like there are some interesting characters in there, like the question mark, uh, the equal sign, and the ampersand. Uh, how are those, uh, you know, what are those characters used for? Strings. So we have the URL right here, the first, first portion, which we're all accustomed to seeing in our web browsers. And the second part is a query string. So after the question mark, we have um, a collection of what are called key value pairs. So you, the Q here is the key, and then our location is the value. And then the next one, it's separated by an ampersand symbol. Um, the next one we have here is limit, and then it says equals one. So limit is the key, and one is the value. Um, and essentially, um, what limit here just means give me back one result instead of multiple results. Uh, and then the same thing again, we have an ampersand again, and then we have app ID followed by our app ID value that's coming in um, that we specify elsewhere. So essentially, we're passing in three different parameters to this API. Okay, so it's basically uh, the URL question mark, and then like input variable name equals the value, and then they have the ampersand to actually separate the, the key value pairs. Sure. So what I'm going to do is I've got some uh, some breakpoints set here, uh, which means that the code is going to run to this point and then stop so we can uh, kind of talk about it and investigate some values. 
So uh, as I've run the program here, we've executed over all of this code. We've gone past the location setting. We've gone past pulling our app ID out of the config file. We've gone past uh, uh, putting together this, this, this URL. And now we're about to execute the actual call out to this remote API. Um, so what I'm going to do is hit the step over button, and I've stepped over it. And so now we've actually gone out and fetched that. And we feel, if we inspect the response, we can see we have a bunch of information in here. Um, so this code has executed. We've we've got a response back, and now we want to do something with it. So the first thing we're going to do is actually dump the raw uh, JSON, which is uh, just the raw data out of this HTTP response, so we can inspect it down below in our console and see what we have. So let's just step over that. So when we step over it, um, the first thing we get is uh, a bunch of information. So the first thing it's telling us we we know we're we're looking at information for Seattle. It also gives us a bunch of alternative names for Seattle in, in different languages and, and whatnot. So that's what this big long list is here. Um, the most important part we're concerned with here is the latitude and longitude. So we have a latitude value here and a longitude value. And as we proceed um, to the next part of this code, the first thing we're doing here is checking for a status code. So every HTTP response uh, has a status code associated with it. 200 is good. We like to see 200. If we don't see 200, we know something went wrong. So um, we're just basically have a we have a flow control statement here. We're saying if the status code equals 200, do this. And inside this block, we're actually just going and extracting this latitude and longitude value and dumping it into a new uh, dictionary object called coordinates. Right. And so um, if it fails, yeah. Sorry, so just to, just to clarify for folks, like all that that raw output is kind of intimidating for folks, and that's that's uh, in JSON notation, as you mentioned. So that's JavaScript object notation, and so the way that um, you know that you've done this is putting this in a Python uh, dictionary is that we can easily find the like the lat long uh, just by referencing like the index and then also um, uh, as well as like the key uh, to find that value is that right exactly we're just extracting it so we can uh, have it more readily available for later okay cool thanks and then uh, if we have any failures here, if we, if we don't have a, if something goes wrong on, on the, the server end with the API, and we don't have a, a 200 code come back, then we're just going to exit the program. So that's all that's happening here. We're just saying system.exit, and we, we spit out a message saying, hey, let and find a location for whatever the input, input location was, Seattle in this case. Um, sure enough, we got past this. We didn't, we didn't exit. Um, so if we get, we set a breakpoint right here and continue, we're going to see that our latitude variable now has this value that we, we extracted out of the JSON. And we have the longitude as well. It extracted this um, this value out of the JSON as well. The next part that we're going to do is now that we have our, our latitude and longitude, we're actually going to call out for some forecasts, uh, some weather forecasts up for for the Seattle area. Um, so the way that this API works, again, it's an uh, it's an openweathermap.org API. Um, the URL is a little different this time. But above we had uh, this one that said geo slash 1.0 slash direct, right? In this case, it looks a little bit different. Our URL is, is different. It says data 2.5, and that the, the 1.0 and the 2.5 are just the version numbers of those web APIs, because they might make changes over time, and they, they, they might make a new version of the API available to you over time. Um, but the most important part of this URL here is the forecast. That's just telling us that, hey, we are we're talking to this API. We want to get a forecast back. Um, and very similar to above, where we have these key value pairs. So we have our, our question mark that denotes everything after the question mark is our is our query string. Our key value pairs here are uh, units equals imperial. So we're just saying, hey, give me back my temperatures in Fahrenheit instead of Celsius. Um, the for count, we're saying how many forecasts do I want to get back. So here I've specified I want to get eight forecasts, and each one of these forecasts is a three-hour increment. So three times eight, we're getting a 24-hour forecast. Um, same thing with latitude and longitude. We're just passing those values in. Um, we've got uh, a lat equals, and it's if I mouse over this right now, we'll see that, you know, the the IDE here, or my development environment, knows that um, that I've got forty seven point six as my latitude, uh, and of course our app ID needs to get passed in every time as well. That's just a way for the API to to know that we're a, an authorized user to use it. Got it. Hey Joe, so a couple of questions for you. So yeah, you know, how did you know like which URL to go to and you know, which input parameters are required? Uh, you know, is it, uh, you know, are you a genius or do they have docs on, and where do, where do people look? Sure, that's a really good question. Um, so if you go to, to openweathermap.org, you will find all of their API documentation there. If I click this little button right here, it says API doc. It's gonna give me all the information I need for, for how to build up this URL. So if we look at this again real quick, we can see this portion right here is exactly what we see right here. So they're telling you exactly how to build it up. And then all the different possible values you can pass to it are here. So our lat lawn, our app ID, the units, 
Um, you could get the response back in XML instead of JSON if you wanted, heaven forbid. Um, so anything you need to know about how to consume this this uh, web API is, is specified here at the openweathermap.org website. Okay, thanks, Joe. So again, just like before, we have an HTTP response object. So just like before, we're just doing a really quick check to make sure that our code is uh, okay, or that our response is okay. In this case, we're saying, hey, if the code, if the response code is not 200, then we're just going to exit the program. So we're going to run right over that. I'm sure we'll get right past it, and we do. And as before, we're going to spit out some some JSON. It's going to be kind of you know maybe a little daunting to anyone who hasn't looked at JSON before, um, but we'll just run over that real quick. So we'll get to here. We run this, and what spits out is a very long list of forecasts. And if we want to take a look at this real quick, it's um, we won't go through the entire thing, but uh, that code we we're talking about is specified right there. We have a we have a 200 code telling us that everything's okay. We see a count, meaning that we have uh, eight forecasts, and then where the forecasts start is in this variable called list, or this um, this part of the JSON response called list. And it's it's an array. It's a list, and it's denoted. It starts being denoted by a square bracket. So I won't go through every single one of these, but you can see inside of here, there's there's data contained, like the temperature, the feels like temperature, the today's te temp min, temp max, which of course we th we, th we think of as a, the the high high temp, low temp, um, and we've got other things like humidity as well. So um, we can extract this data just like we extracted the lat launch data. Okay, so now that we have that data, we want to do something with it. So instead of looking at and in this JSON format, we're going to actually spit it out in a, a formatted um, it's going to be formatted in such a way that it, it looks better to our human eyes, you know, instead of this um, this JSON. Um, so what's going on here is it looks kind of daunting and confusing, but it's um, all we're doing is is spitting out some of these values. So for example, here is the 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 response or the JSON from our response is right here. I'm grabbing the city and I'm grabbing the city name, and then I'm saying. Um, since we have three hour increments, we have eight of them. I'm saying I'm multiplying three by, by eight, and so this will make 24. So it'll make a 24 hour forecast for um, Seattle. Um, and it, I put in parentheses here, three hour increments, just so we know we're looking at three hour increment forecasts. Then since we have a list of these things, we have eight of these forecasts, um, we're using what's called a for loop here. So we're saying for everything in this list, um, we want to uh, do this chunk of code right here. So it's doing something that, it, this first line looks a little confusing. It's just a timestamp. It's saying, um, you know, Monday, April tenth at you know ten p.m. So this this formatter um, spits that out. Now, if you if you didn't know what this is, you can look it up um, very easily. You can just Google uh, Python uh, date formatting. You'll find all the information that you need to to make a custom formatted date. Um, the conditions section here is just the weather conditions. It could be misty, it could be rainy, it could be clear, it could be cloudy. Sometimes a forecast has multiple conditions. So in this case, we're taking those multiple conditions and, and putting them together with a slash. So you see this little slash symbol right there. And then the rest of it's really simple. We have our temperature, we have our feels like temperature, we have our low temp, our high temp, and we have our humidity. And we're just slapping some values on the end of that too. So we're extracting um, the temperature from the JSON. We're extracting the, the feels like. So that's why you see these um, these values here that look very similar to what we saw in the JSON because we're ex we're extracting these values directly from the JSON. Within that J uh, within that JSON output, it, uh, it correct me if I'm wrong, but like the temp and feels like elements are actually child elements of the the main element. Is that right? That's correct. That's right. That's that's why we have uh, one square bracket and another square bracket. So we're accessing. Oops. We're accessing uh, one value, and then we're accessing another sub value within it by saying temperature. That's right. Got it. Exactly. Okay. Thanks. So if we go ahead and continue and run this, what we get as output in our output screen is, is something that will make sense to us. Um, this first line uh, right here that we talked about earlier, it spits out this line. It says 24 hour forecast for Seattle in three hour increments. And then after that, we start printing out each one of our forecasts. This one is Tuesday, April 11th, 2023 at 1 a.m. The conditions will be rain. The temperature will be 43. It'll feel like 39. The low for the for this time period will be 42, and the high will be 43, and the humidity is 92 percent, and so on and so on. So we can look. We've got eight of these, right? So uh, all we've done is iterated over this list of, of forecasts that came back in our JSON response and did something with it that is useful to us. It, it's it's a it's a human readable format. So this is uh, this is basically the fundamentals of uh, you know in Python, but uh, just like with any other programming language, of how you would uh, make web API calls. Is that right? That's correct. Yep. It's it looks, you know, it looks Pythony, but it's it's not much different than it would be in any other language. Okay, that's right. So, what's an example of an app uh, that would be, you know, pulling Open Weather Map API data? 
there's a really great example of how to do this out at educative.io and um, there is a, this is a more complex sample very very similar it's using open weather map apis it's formatting data however this is actually a web app so um, it's a little more involved uh, but you can completely do it uh, by following the tutorials uh, in your ide or you can do it right there in the web browser as well which is really great so um, here we have uh, a bunch of weather output for Seattle. But the neat thing about this is it's really dynamic. So we can actually change this right now, hit search, um, and get forecasts for New York. Any any other city we can think of um, uh, right off the bat. Okay. And so what they're what this app is basically doing, it's uh, in this case they're using like the, the Django uh, web development framework for Python to to render that front end. But to actually like get all that data, it's doing basically the same thing we were doing uh, or you were doing is by making those API calls and then uh, accessing the values from the JSON response. Um, and then in this case, they're just outputting it not to the terminal, but they're outputting it to their web page. That's correct. Exactly. Okay. Awesome. Well, Joe, this was uh, a lot of fun and super, uh, super informative. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, for everyone out there, I hope you learned something. Uh, and look in the description where we have a link to uh, not only the code that Joe ran, but also a link to this course uh, where you can learn more about Python and APIs. If you enjoyed this video, help us out by liking and subscribing. And tell us in the comments if you want us to explore any other languages or topics. Come visit us at educative.io, where we have over 600 courses spanning programming languages, web development, data science, and system design and interview prep that provide pre-built dev environments that let you code directly in the browser so you don't have to configure anything. Thanks for listening, and maybe check out one of these videos next. Thanks.